Hey guys, welcome back to Embers and Ash. My name's Ashley, if you didn't know, and today we are talking about all the controversial parenting topics. I'm really nervous about this because I know that there's a lot of emotions tied to these topics and people get fiery. I don't get too affected by hate comments, so like it'll be fine, but also just like don't be mean. <laughs> like if you have something to say, if you have an opinion, by all means, post it in the comments, share what you think. I love getting new concepts, new advice from you guys, but just don't be mean about it, you know? So let's try and keep this a safe space as we go through the most heated topics. <laughs> so why am I putting myself in this position to get a lot of hate? Well, going through my motherhood journey, there have been struggles, as there is with everyone who's entering motherhood, um, and I really needed someone to tell me some of these things, but it's not like this information was just out there so much in the open because people are scared to talk about it. And I would have really benefited from just a video where people talked about alternative parenting baby concepts, I guess. So I want to be that resource for you guys. Um, a couple disclaimers, I'm not a doctor, so don't take my advice as law, I guess. Do your own research, talk to your doctors. Also, the things I'm talking about now aren't set in stone. I may change my mind over time, but this is just where I'm at right now. Um, yeah, okay, let's get into it. This is gonna be fun. I also wanna say that, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do a lot of parenting things. Obviously, in some cases, there are wrong ways and you, there's things you shouldn't do with your baby. But for the most part, a lot of these topics I'm talking about, there isn't a right or wrong. There's just whatever system works for you. So I'm talking about my ways. Okay, the first concept is nursing to sleep. So I, Sometimes nurse Rook to sleep and it's a great time. A lot of people say don't nurse your baby to sleep because then they're gonna rely on it and they're gonna need that to fall asleep. And whenever they wake in the middle of the night, they won't know how to soothe themselves back to sleep because they've only fallen asleep on the boob or on the bottle, whatever you're doing. Um, and I completely agree with that, but there is something so special about nursing your baby to sleep, especially as your baby gets older and they're less cuddly it is so nice just holding my sleeping baby, like, so precious. I don't do it all the time because I don't want to create that habit, but it is still something I value a lot and I will continue to do occasionally. Something I heard from a sleep consultant online was that there's no good or bad habits, there's the habits that you choose to live with. Your baby is always gonna have sleep crutches, something that they need as cues to fall asleep or just to make their life easier for falling asleep and therefore your life. So you just choose which crutches you want to live with. And some moms want to nurse their baby to sleep every night and that is just the crutch that they're deciding to live with because they like the benefits of it. So yeah, I like nursing Rook to sleep occasionally. I have more to say about sleep, but let's move on because that is a touchy one. Let's talk about eating. So there's baby led weaning and there's purees. There's a lot of strong opinions for why you should do one versus the other. And I fall in the middle ground, which I think is a little less common. I think, I don't know, tell me if I'm wrong. But my doctor suggested starting foods at four months and so we did with purees and that was really nice because it was just getting Rook used to flavors. And now that Rook is six months old, we're transitioning into baby led weaning. And I really like this setup because he's already used to those new flavors. He's now just learning the concept of grabbing the food and putting it in his mouth on his own. So I feel like it was less of a shock. Um, yeah, I really like doing it this way. Some people say four months is too early for babies to eat. Some people say six months is too late. Everyone has their opinion. I really like doing a combined system. Do what you feel works for you. Um, okay, screen time is a very hot topic. We don't prevent screen time. So I didn't realize how early on you have to make a decision on this. It was at like five, six weeks when Rook noticed the TV and his eyes were glued onto it because that's when their like longer distance vision comes in. And I wasn't really ready for that because we live in such a small home and I like just having a TV show or YouTube on in the background as I go about my day. I had to figure out what I wanted to do with screen time. So originally Rook would 
would be laying on the ground in the living room with his activity center and I would just put a blanket over top of it so he couldn't see the TV, which worked. I also move him into his room to play so that he doesn't watch it, but I'm not gonna be like hardcore preventing screen time. And my reason behind this is because I feel like if you completely limit it, once your kid gets exposure to it, they are gonna go nuts over it. Um, because it's something that they've never seen before. Obviously it's very enticing, they're gonna become obsessive. Not every kid, but like, I just see it as a possibility. I know for myself, we had limited channels growing up, like TV channels. And when I was like 15, 16 years old, we got extended channels, like up to channel 52 or whatever. So we got, uh, what is it, the Disney channel. And I was obsessed with that channel for months when we got it because it was all this new content I had never seen before. Um, so yeah, I just don't want that to be the case with my kid where I hardcore limit screen time and then the second they get exposure to it, it's all they want to do, all they think about. So we'll let Rook watch TV with us sometimes, especially like during Christmas. You know, he's so young, but like we watched Christmas movies together and that was nice. And already I'm noticing that if the TV is on, he'll look at it, but if there's something more interesting, he'll look at that thing instead. So yeah, that's my stance on screen time. Something else controversial was that we moved Rook into the nursery in his crib by himself for nighttime sleep at three months old. I was very stressed and confused about this at the time because so many people online were telling me that I needed to wait to six months and that some pediatric society says to wait till six months, but it didn't make sense for us because Rook outgrew his bassinet and he was sleeping through the night at three months, so it only made sense to move him into his own room. He got a better sleep because Josh and I weren't giggling, making noise. He had more space in his crib and I had an audio monitor to hear if anything was going on, you know, crying. So it just worked out great. I had to ask around to other parent friends to see what they did and they're like, yeah, it's no big deal. Move your kid into their room at three months old. But no one on the internet was saying that. So I'm the one on the internet telling you, if you wanna move your kid into their own room at three months, go for it. <laughs> but also check with your doctor and all that stuff. Okay, let's talk about nighttime routine. A lot of people talk about their full complex nighttime schedule for their baby. There are 10 steps to getting their baby to sleep, and that's just not the kind of person I am. Um, we have a very short routine with putting Rook down, and I feel like it's enough that he gets with the program, and he sometimes cries for a couple minutes and goes to sleep. Sometimes he cries longer if he's going through a leap, and you know, we deal with that. But basically our routine is I feed him, he stays up and plays for a while, and then when he's ready to actually go to sleep, we turn on the air purifier, which is only on for nighttime sleep. We put him in his sleep sack, I sing him a song, we change his diaper, and that's it. And it's super quick. It's not like a whole hour long process, you know? And no hate to anyone who does that long process. Good for you, if it works for your baby, if your baby needs it, fantastic. This is just how I'm doing things. And the last topic, the most juicy topic, is about sleep training. Uh, there is so much hate for the cry it out method. And I get it because no one wants to hear their baby cry. No one wants to leave their baby crying. There's people that say that it has an emotional toll on your baby and it will affect them for years to come, that they don't feel secure with their family. But the research I've done um, from professionals says that that's not the case. And if you do gentle sleep training, you really are showing your kid that you are there, you are supportive, but it's time to sleep. So that's what we're doing. Not not so much just like let them cry and leave them in the room crying. We do a system of every so often, like a certain time period, we go in, check on Rook, tell him that we love him, tell him that it's time to sleep, um, and then we leave. And then if he keeps crying, we go back in and tell him the same thing, and eventually he falls asleep. This has worked really well for us. It was honestly only like a couple day period, like three to five days of him struggling to fall asleep on his own. And then it's no problem. Like I said, you'll have hiccups when he's going through a developmental leap. He does struggle to sleep, but 
that's kind of expected. And I've also heard that some babies need sleep training. They can't learn how to do it on their own. So again, take my story how you want to, do your own research, talk to your doctor. If you're not comfortable letting your baby cry, then don't. Do whatever you need to do to get by. Because the healthier of a mind state that you're in, the better mom you'll be. I know that if I'm up all night, I can't be a good mom to Rook. So we went through that little time period of struggling to get him to learn how to sleep. And now I can be a better mom because I'm also sleeping. So yeah, those are all my controversial parenting topics. I thought I would be more nervous than this actually, but I don't know. I'm just very confident in the actions that I've taken. So I don't feel bad about saying it. Um, let me know what you think. I do really want to hear your opinions and your points of view. Keep it nice keep it supportive but I want to hear what you guys do or especially things that no one told you but you wish you would have known like I wish someone would have told me that it's okay to move your baby from your room to the nursery at three months so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I really hope it's been helpful again thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one